morning. I think I've reached the end of the road here. The road does continue through this creek to the other side, but it's not something I'm going to be driving in the RAV4. I've driven a couple dozen miles to get here on dirt roads, and I knew there was a possibility that I'd get shut down by the river here or by the creek, and uh, it is indeed the case. The road is sort of, I'm not going to say paved, but there are these concrete, I guess, pillars providing a, a surface, a, a semi-solid surface to go across if you were to drive, but I think you would need high clearance for this. It's something I would probably try in the Land Cruiser, but definitely not going to try in the RAV4. And so I'm going to proceed from here on foot, but I am going to take the bike with me to ride up the dirt road after I cross the, the creek here. The spot that I, I'm going to start hiking at, like the actual start of the trail that I wanted to start hiking this morning, is about two miles further up the road. So not too, too far. If I really needed to, I could just walk it in you know, 45 minutes or so, but I have the bike with me, so I'm gonna walk or carry the bike across the creek, and then I'll ride the bike uh, again further up the road and, uh, until I get to a campground, which I think is the start of the hike that I'm doing. And you just know this water is gonna be brutally cold. I'm not looking forward to this. It's early in the morning. It's about 55 degrees. It's already a little bit chilly outside. And so this water is just going to be kind of brutal, but we do what we must. Ooh, yeah, that is, that is indeed, ow, that is cold water. And there are sharp rocks here. Okay, I made it to the little concrete uh, concrete slabs here definitely makes walking easier. Let's just focus on not getting swept off our feet here. The water is about calf high. And yeah, the concrete is a little bit slippery. Definitely glad I didn't try this in the RAV4. That would not have been wise. Okay, I think we've cleared it. Not too bad, but very cold. My only concern is if it rains later on today and uh, the, the water level rises in the creek and I'm, you know, it makes it a little bit tricky to get back to my car, but I don't think it'll be that much of an issue. I think we'll be okay. Even if it does rain a little bit, which I think it will, I think it, I mean, it does look like a little bit of, of rain today. We'll be fine, right? Yeah, we'll be fine. But once again, as with the last video, I am in the Wyoming range, which is a mountain range in, spoiler, Wyoming. Uh, I'm in Western Wyoming and I'm only about well, when I get to where I, I wanted to be today, I'll, I'll be only about 15, 14 or 15 miles from the mountain that I climbed yesterday. But there are no direct dirt roads that go between here and there. And so it was something like a three and a half hour drive between last night and this morning to get here. Three and a half hours to cover what is 15, 14 or 15 miles as the crow flies. Pretty crazy, but I'm happy to be here, happy to be on the road, and I'll be happy to be on the trail here shortly. All right, as expected, there is a campground here, Hobble Creek Campground. Let's see, it looks like it's $10 per night. Okay, there's a pit toilet here. Nice. Ground squirrel just ran in front of me. I'm looking for the trailhead. From this trailhead, we're gonna hike a trail that'll take us up a side canyon, a side valley. Looks like we have four vehicles here.
with a canoe beached <laughs> at the edge of the parking area. Okay, let's uh, let's hang up the bike here. I think I'll I'll chain it to that that hitching post over here, and then we'll hit the trail. I do have to cross the creek again here, but luckily there's a little footbridge, just wide enough for people hiking single file. Really pretty creek. We're going to be hiking past another creek, or rather along another creek and uh, there's something very interesting about that creek and there's also something very interesting about the the lake that we're hiking to so that is our ultimate destination the hike from here to the lake is uh it's only about a mile and a half it's not super far Ooh, and this this foliage that i'm walking through is wet i don't know if that's morning dew or recent rain but it's getting my clothes all wet So this is the creek that the trail has been following. Pretty normal looking creek, pretty little creek. But there's something kind of weird about this creek and that's that it just starts right here. Let's go take a closer look. So you can see, you know, the water is flowing. This is already right here. I mean, much less flow than, you know, 50 feet downstream. Then if we go beyond even that, just a little bit further, this is where the water comes out of the ground right here. And so the interesting thing about this is that this isn't like a traditional spring in the sense that it comes from deep underground. This actually comes from the lake, which is about a mile above me here. And so the, this outlet stream from the lake starts at the lake but goes underground for a mile and then emerges right here as a little spring. Isn't that cool? So from here, I'm gonna climb back up this steep little side path, back up to the main trail. And again, should be about another mile, another mile of hiking to get to the lake. been hiking for just under an hour now and I'm almost to the lake but before we get there there's a sign here and uh, there's like a, a heading a title on the sign and it says birth of a lake let's read it and uh, it'll explain how Lake Alice which is the lake that I'm almost at here was formed to your right you can see the mountain from which thousands of years ago a large landslide tumbled into the creek so if we look over here you can see I, I think this is like the the path of the landslide right here. You can see some, some kind of dirt cliffs, I guess for lack of a better word, and some the, the lower slopes of the landslide down here. And so when this happened, it blocked the creek that was here and uh, creating Lake Alice behind it. Legend has it the lake was named after a girl who drowned here in the early 1900s. And then down here, it says, Today Lake Alice is the home of the only known pure strain of Bonneville cutthroat trout. Enjoy this unique lake with picnic sites just ahead and special camping units further up the trail. All right, that is from Trout Unlimited and Bridger Teton National Forest. Let's keep going and take a look at the lake. Actually, just a little bit below the sign, we have a better view of the, the path of the landslide here. You can see this kind of depression in the side of the mountain. And that's where the mountainside just calved off and rumbled down. And finally, here we go. First look at the lake. It's a long, skinny lake, so it's not very wide this way, but it extends up the valley quite a ways. And it does have a couple of arms that go off to the side. And there are some people hanging out in a canoe right there. I read online that uh, some people have brought 
boats and stash them at the lakeside. And if you can find one, then you're welcome to use it. I would not want to haul a hard-sided boat up that trail. My understanding is that there is a trail of some sort that follows along the right side of the lake. So I'm gonna do that. And uh, this is also where the campsites, some of the designated campsites are. So I'm sure I'll see some, uh, some people camped around here. I see a couple of tents off to my right right here, right at the start of the lake. But I'll find a nice quiet spot to hang out and rest and relax a little bit, and then I'll fill you in on what I have planned for the rest of the afternoon here. And look at this water. This is like Caribbean turquoise, beautiful clear water. And it is just glassy smooth. There is no wind up here. Beautiful. This is one of the campsites along the lake here. I just passed one that had half a dozen tents at it, but this one is empty. There's a picnic table there. And uh, a fire pit or two and another picnic table. Nice spot. Well, I've been hiking for an hour and 45 minutes and I think I'm gonna set up my temporary day camp right here. And uh, speaking of camps, uh, there were people camped in the first, I think, two campsites that I came across when I got to the lake, but these last two or three haven't had any, any people or tents in them. But what a gorgeous little spot this is. Let me show you. So I'm inside of a little inlet right here. This out here is the main body of the lake, and you can see uh, a point of land right here and this little point right here, this little peninsula right here, and then there's this arm, this little arm of the lake, this little inlet or bay that comes in this way. And the water here, I don't know how, how well it'll translate to the camera, but it is so pretty. It is so clear, and again, just a beautiful kind of turquoise, greenish blue color. And I'm reminded of a lake, of a large lake on the Utah-Idaho border called Bear Lake. And in all of the, the tourist literature for that part of Utah, they call Bear Lake the Caribbean of the Rockies, because it really is a, a beautiful kind of bluish turquoise color. This is what that reminds me of, except this water is much more clear than the water at Bear Lake. And, uh, but yeah, this is like a little, little slice of the Caribbean high up in the, in the remote mountains of Wyoming. And Bear Lake is kind of a zoo. Uh, there are a couple state parks along the banks and you know, thousands of people at any given time in good weather are there at the lake. This, I mean, you can't drive to it, so that keeps people away. And then it's like a mile and a half hike uphill that keeps people away. Uh, not overly difficult though, that hike. You know, it was uphill, but it really wasn't too bad. But uh, that's enough. And the fact that this is kind of in a, in a, <laughs> more obscure part of Wyoming and not in the Tetons or, or in Yellowstone or anything like that it means that this is just a beautiful little remote, isolated, quiet, peaceful, perfect little lake. I love it. I have two things planned for my visit here. The first is I want to catch some fish. You know, that sign near the start of the lake said that this is the, this is home to pure strain Bonneville cutthroat trout, which means basically that they haven't mixed with other uh, related species. So for, for example, cutthroat and rainbow trout can, can breed, and the result is a fish called a, a cutbow. But that's not the case here. Uh, this is all, all pure Bonneville cutthroat trout, which is the state fish of Utah, but it's also common in a couple of other neighboring states. Well, not common, but it exists in in Idaho and Wyoming also. And so let's uh, let's get the fishing gear out. I wanna see one of these beautiful fish up close. I've, I've caught a lot of Bonneville cutthroat trout over the years, so I fish a lot. I have a separate fishing channel actually called Tenkara Addict. I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, Tenkara is a form of Japanese fly fishing. And I do have a Tenkara rod with me in the backpack. It's a, a simple form of fly fishing. But uh, I thought it would be fun to bring this little uh, pack rod. This is a spinning rod. It's like a regular fishing rod or pole, you might say. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted to show it to you because I, I, if I have shown this to you guys, it's been years. And so I wanted to 
give you guys a look. And, and uh, if you are into fishing, then this is a great little packable rod to keep in your, in your car or in your backpack. So it comes with a little reel and then comes in several sections. And these all just kind of insert nest into each other and make a nice little like three foot long fishing rod. It's not, not a big rod. You're not going to be bombing casts, you know, hundreds of yards out there. But for this kind of thing, for just tossing out some, some little lures, I think it should be okay. And as far as the regulations of this lake go, uh, it is, let's see, what were they? Uh, artificial flies and lures only. So you can't fish with, with you know, eggs or, or worms or anything like that. And then there were some other uh, some other limits as far as keeping your catch. Like there were there were limits on the number of fish that you could that you could keep and and eat. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let me put this together and then we'll get to fishing and see if we can we can catch anything. And I've got a small collection of lures here. Oh, I also brought a little little landing net. This is a pack net. It folds up. Pretty neat. And then these lures here, I just brought a small selection of mostly spoons and spinners, if that means anything to you. So I'll, I'll toss a spoon on, but I've also got some, some little like rooster tails and uh, yeah, gold, gold and silver spoons. Okay, first cast. Let's see how long it takes to get a bite. Ooh, I see a fish. It's a good sized fish. God, oh! Oh, it went for it. The fish went for it, but... Ah, oh, didn't connect. Oh, fish on! Fish on! Good fish! Good fish! Nice. I've got, I've got a net here, but it's fighting. And this isn't a super, you know, tough rod with a lot of backbone. Let's see if I can land it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Am I recording? Yes, okay, I was. Woo, okay. Uh, I've been fishing for over an hour, probably an hour and 15 minutes. Got the spoon out. This is just a, a spoon with a single barbless hook on it. And wow, that is a beautiful fish. That's like a, let's see, it's a 16 inch Bonneville cutthroat trout. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish, guys. Oh, there he goes. I was trying to get a picture with my phone, but oh man, what a, what a gorgeous fish. That was awesome. Sorry I couldn't get a closer view for you guys. I should have done the closer look before I tried to take a picture, but uh, that was awesome. Okay, I might fish some more later, but I told you that there were two things that I wanted to do here. The first was catch a fish. We did that. A big 16, you know, 15, 16 inch pure strain cutthroat, native cutthroat trout. So that's awesome. The second thing I want to do, uh, well, let me show you. Let me go back to my backpack here. So what I have here is a boat. This is a pack raft that I've just wrapped, wrapped it around a large plastic bag here. It's just to protect it a little bit. But this is a raft. I've had this for several months. I bought this. Uh, this wasn't sent to me by the company that makes this or anything like that. I, I just bought it. This is called the, let's see, the Rapid Raft, I think, by a company called Uncharted Supply Company. Not a cheap 
toy. <laughs> this was uh, somewhere in the three or four hundred dollar range. I think I got it on sale for three, three fifty, four hundred, something like that. Uh, I've never used it. This is how it came, and I've never unfurled it. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, I can put it together. The thing about this raft is that it's very easy to inflate, hence the name Rapid Raft. And so let's uh, unbuckle this here. Okay. Let's see, I, I took a picture. I took a picture on my phone of the instruction card that came with it. So let me consult that. Step one, unfurl and pull in a scooping motion. Step two, roll the excess tightly together. Step three, buckle the clasp firmly shut. And then step four, top off using the one-way valve. Okay, so first, it has a big opening in the back. It's like a dry bag. And so the idea is that you scoop air into this and then you close it and then you can, you know, Close it off, tighten it up. Let's try this. It's gonna take me a few tries, I know. Okay, I think I need more air than that. Okay. I don't think that was enough. You can see, yeah, I'll need to do it again, but you can see how it's supposed to work. I just didn't get enough air in there. Let's try it again. Let's try that. I'm gonna have to watch some more YouTube videos and practice a little bit at home. Actually, that was, that's pretty good. Okay. I didn't do a very good job of rolling this up. I feel like that's gonna come back to bite me. I feel like the air is probably gonna leak out of here, but... Okay. Oh, fish just jumped right offshore there. Okay, got the raft. Now let's, let's top it up here. Okay, that's pretty darn cool. Again, that wasn't a very elegant uh, filling, but I'll get the hang of it. The idea is that you don't need a pump for this so it's lighter and and ostensibly it's faster to, to fill and I can see how once you did get the hang of it, then yeah, it would be. You don't have to, you know, stand there and pump for, for a long time. And this is pretty lightweight. I don't remember the, the exact weight of this thing, but uh, I'll put it on the screen. So let me get a few more things together, then we'll hit the water. Okay, I added three more little pieces to the puzzle here. The first is a very small and lightweight inflatable seat. Uh, this is this is not from the same company that sold this. I just bought this for pretty cheap on Amazon. Decided it would be a good little uh, pad for my rear end to keep it off of the the cold floor because there's no like insulation or anything in the bottom of this boat. It's just you know a th very thin layer of material between you and the cold water. So got that. Don't know if that'll work. We'll see. And then I read some reviews of people doing this, and I thought it was a good idea. They got some tubing and you can slip it over the end of this blow valve so that while you're sitting in the water, you can inflate it a little bit more. You can top it off because once this gets in the water, the coldness of the water will make the air in here a little bit colder. So it'll, it'll act like it's, it's deflating, but uh, it's not necessarily. You just need to blow some more air into it to get it back to its taut shape here. And then this paddle is a, a four section paddle that I also brought up here. So let's get in the water. Wish me luck. 
Gonna be some cold water here. Ooh, yep, it's cold. Not as cold as that creek that I crossed this morning though, so that's something. Okay. We're floating. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. Totally worth it. You know, I have another pack raft. I have a large two-person pack raft so that my wife can come with me on water trips on the lake or the river or just when I need a lot of room for me and my gear on like an overnight pack rafting trip down a river or something like that. Uh, that's what I use that pack raft for, but it weighs like, I don't know, 12 pounds or something like that. And it's, it's not very compact. This one is compact. As you saw, super lightweight. Man, this is just awesome. This is kind of a, just a, a test run here, a trial run. I wanted to see how this thing worked. I've, I've never tested it out before, never inflated it. And man, so far, so darn good. This is so cool. And the little seat is working well too. My, my rear end doesn't have frostbite, so we're all good on that front. Wow. This is just your joy. <laughs> I love it. Well guys, that was, I mean, the, the word that keeps coming back to me is delightful. That was so much fun. And I didn't even really, didn't even really do anything. I just kind of went out and kind of went in a circle and came back and, you know, nothing crazy, but it's just, there's something about being on the water in a beautiful place like this, on a beautiful lake, high in the mountains, no one else around. Just feeling like you're gliding across the water on this thing. <laughs> so cool, big thumbs up from me. And uh, a raft like this opens up some pretty fun potential adventures in the future. So for example, I can go hike up into the mountains and then paddle down a river or just, you know, even just taking it up into high mountain lakes and paddling around the high mountain lakes. That just adds another dimension to a trip that you really wouldn't get otherwise. It's like, you know, going up into the mountains and, and then flying. You know, it's just another medium. There's solid earth, there's the sky, and then there's the water. And having something like this, it's like having a superpower, being able to get out on the water. Just so cool, so much fun. Now let me pack all this stuff up and show you how it all collapses. So this is one piece of the paddle, two, three, and four. And then uh, I have a little mesh bag that I can put these into and it just slips right on into my backpack, no problem. And then as for the, the raft itself, I'm gonna try folding it in thirds. Now how do I 
there was a certain way this was this was done. That's not bad for a first try. Again, that's something that I can practice more and figure out a little bit more in the future. But I mean, that's yeah, pretty intuitive. Super fun little toy. I'm excited to see what I can do with this in the future. It's several hours later now. I'm at my camp for the night. It is 5.30. And after putting the pack raft away, I fished for another hour, had no luck. And so I got out of there. I hiked back along the lake and then down the, the kind of steep trail. And then I biked back to the creek. And then I crossed the creek with the bike and got back to the car and drove around, found this awesome campsite. Let me show it to you here. Well, I actually can't really show you very much because it's raining, uh, raining pretty heavily. It started raining a little bit as I was crossing the creek back to the car. And then just as I started driving, it got worse and worse. But look at the, the great view of the mountains out here. I love it. Really cool campsite. And what a fun day. I, I really enjoyed uh, the hike up to the lake and then that lake is just gorgeous. What a, what a little gem up in the mountains there. And that pack raft is so cool. I'm really excited to take that on more adventures this summer. Let me know if you have a suggestion for me of uh, fun adventures I could do with that pack raft. I'm, I'm, you know, I've already got the wheels turning in my head, but I'd like to hear if you guys have any suggestions also. And I think that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to uh, hang out here and for a couple hours until it gets dark, and then I'll hang out for another few hours until it's time for bed and hopefully the rain eases up at some point but I hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching let me know what you think let me know what your favorite part was let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one be sure to check out adventure know-how my new site where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.